in the um, event so far today. Um, so I'm really conscious that it's another PowerPoint presentation. So, um, but hopefully it's going to be opportunities for people to kind of ask questions or, or raise their hand. There's 30 of us, we can make it a little bit more interactive, I think, than, than when there's 260 people in the room. Um, and I kind of usually, my PowerPoint is not loads of um, loads of text. It's effectively just sort of aid prompts and made them wise for, for me. So um, I'm Chris Morris. I'm the Chief Officer for Education, Centre and Schools here in Bedford Borough Council. If I move us on, let's see if that works. Yeah, so I'm sure everyone on this call um, knows everything there is to know about the wonderful borough of Bedford. But just in case you didn't, uh, here's some slides, slightly out of date slides, and I'm going to cover um, come to that. But we're, we're relatively small. So um, across Bedford Borough, there's around about 185 to 990,000 um, people. We are growing quite rapidly. So we had a 19% population increase from census to census. So in 10 years, we increased by um, almost 20%. So um, there's a sort of a weird stat around us being one of the fastest growing towns or boroughs in one of the fastest growing regions in the east of England. So we are building lots of houses and lots of people moving in, which is great. Um, but that is causing some, some capacity issues, especially in our demand led services, which I'm sure many of you will be aware of. Um, those 1600 EHCPs at the top, actually, it's 1900 now. Um, EHCPs, we know our data around, you know, 40% of kids who are open to children's social care have identified SEND needs. We are more ethnically diverse than people, I think, assume. We have 281 different ethnic groups living in Bedford Borough with some real. Um, pockets of high levels of um, diversity, which is it, it brilliant, but we have a lot of schools uh, with high levels of EAL um, as well. Um, and just so actually more relevant, um, all of it's relevant, but in terms of the context for EHCPs, we've had a 60% increase in the numbers of EHCPs in the last five years. Um, we still have positive 20 week timescales, which is, which is great. Um, but that also has a bit of a knock on impact. We're looking at some of our annual view data and it's not quite where it, where it needs to be as well. Our exclusions are too high. Um, so if you look at our data on our, our levels of exclusions, in particular children with, with SEND, um, is, is twice the national average. So that's that's a real struggle for us. Um, and we've been on a bit of a journey. Everyone always says they hate the word journey. I try not to use it, but I can't think of a better word. But so we have been on one um, where we had a real statement of action in, in 2018. We had a successful revisit in 2020. In 2022, we were identified as a set of improvement partner by the DFE. Um, so we've kind of gone a bit of a rapid improvement journey there. And we're really keen to stress that we don't have all the answers, but we wanted to help, which is where we went to the set of improvement world, um, because it's quite useful to have someone who's definitely got those high exclusions and challenges that other, other areas have but also as being on the place where we've had the fallout from a rich statement of action, had to rebuild our partnerships and really look at how we do things to start to build that from the ground up. Um, and we're also part of the chain of partnership. Um, so we lead in the eastern re region alongside Central Bedfordshire and Luton. So some sort of background and context in Bedford Borough, and especially when we talk about data um, and the data dashboard that has come out as part of those, um, the chain of partnership, it's interesting to to be known. So that's us in Bedford, just to give you some context. Um, and so I, I've been in lots of presentations, a lot of conversations about data dashboard. That term is used all the time. Um, so I sort of I'm not going to just talk specifically about the data dashboard and data. I'm going to talk about more about all around it, what do you do. But the starting point for me is, is what do we mean by data? Um, and I remember when I started in a role around send improvement and coming into that that world across nhs and local authority there's lots of conversations about oh, we just don't have that data yet or we haven't really built our data dashboard or we need to build something from the beginning and there was almost this this acceptance or conversations if we didn't have any data if it was a blank piece of paper and i started going to lots of different meetings and realizing we had loads of data um it's just it wasn't in any sort of coordinated place or we weren't able to start articulating or having those conversations or even worse people didn't feel confident sharing it because it didn't look good or it wasn't it wasn't improving where it was and it was it was really um messy in around sort of 2018 2019 space and we started to pull some of these data sets in together so we had performance reports 
you know, how did we do? Um, what's our timeliness? What's our 20 week timeliness? Um, complaints, all those things around sort of performances. KPIs also linked to target setting and where we're going. Within health, within the ICB, we have lots of contractual reporting and lots of targets and lots of sets around you know, how many children were being seen, how many children were under you know, 18 weeks, what was the referral to treatment time, all those things. There's lots of contractual reporting that are linked to, to it. We then started looking at actually, we've also got data around the quality assurance processes um, that was in place. Qualitative data, what are children and young people telling us, what are parent carers they take telling us, our joint strategic needs analysis and having a SEN chapter, and also trend data analysis is quite often at the back of lots of performance reports. You'll see this bar charts that people in performance have spent lots of time pouring over and creating and doesn't always get the same time spent looking at it around our um, trend data of you know, what was this data set and what's it been over the last five years and where is it growing? In particular, trend data for me is really interesting in looking at identification of need, um, in particular looking at what's coming through. And again, I've talked about Bed for Borough, we're seeing a huge spike in the numbers of children getting EHC fees for autism as the primary need coming through. And we can also track our SLCN data, which is from under sevens, under eights, where we're querying actually is that a category of need because there's not yet an autism diagnosis and then that tails off and spikes into our autism spike. So again, trend data analysis is really interesting. But when we actually look at it, a lot of what we look at is rear view mirror. So a lot of what we do in local authorities in general, but also um, in particular in children's services and education and SEND is how did we do? So we're having meetings and we're looking at it and we're looking back over the last quarter or even if we're looking at statistical first releases, and this is the challenge of the national data sets that you'll see and the CDC have tried it and DFP are trialing it, is often there's a real lag in the data. So you're looking at how did we do? What was our attendance like? And you know, your attendance is, is two terms from the previous academic year until you get to the point of sort of spring. So it's real, it's really backwards looking. But if you look at some of this, our quality assurance, our qualitative data, our JSNA, our trend data analysis should be helping us to look forward. And that was one of the questions that we had in Bedford is, is so what? It's a phrase that we used all the time. So what? We've got all this data. We said we didn't have it. I discovered loads of it. I pulled it into some sort of dashboard. And then the question for us was, so what? What do we what do we do with it? We need some check and know whether we've performed well or not performed well and we need to make adjustments and see whether or not that improves as we move forward but if we're also talking about a send system and making sure a send system works we need to make sure we've got data that enables us to look forward what do we need if we've got a 60 percent increase in ehcps over the last five years what are we in our jsna predicting our ehcps to go to over the next two three four five years and have we got a workforce that's fit to meet that demand. That's where data should be being used more effectively. And it's sometimes, or, or more than sometimes, it's more often than not, isn't being used that. It's more to check, did we do what we said we were going to do over the last quarter in our performance? So my performance report that I've talked about in, in Bedford, so we have data in different sections. So education, you'll expect to see most of this thing, this, this data, I'm sure most of you would have data dashboards that are very similar. So we look at education data around our attainment, around exclusions, including suspensions and permanent exclusions. And what's really important is we use live data there. So rather than exclusions data and waiting for what's been published, and because that's a lot of lag in the exclusions data in particular gets very cleansed, um, we're also looking at our live data around data that have been reported to us from our schools to look at our exclusion straight to data as well. Um, we have all the data from the CEN2 and, and also we have data from our school census. So um, we can pull out information from the school census around the numbers of children with um, CEN support and with the EHCPs. And in particular, in your January census, you get a lot of rich data there around primary need as well. Um, so it's really important that we use that to help us with our trend, not just our own internal, but also looking at within our schools because we're a net importer from other local authorities as well. So we're looking at where our pressures are in our school system, especially on our border schools, for that sensitive data. Not an employment, education and training, some neat data. Um, and under, I, I think, often overlooked 
data set is the numbers of, of children and young people we've sent who are educated to level two or level three by age 19. Um, and that's one that we really focus on, especially for any of you who are focusing on looking at you preparing for adulthood. It's a really key data set there because if we just focus on key stage four outcomes, sometimes we miss the fact that actually our further education is, is continuing to take children on and young people on into level two, level three, which is where we need them to be at age 19 if we're going to then think about higher education or into employment um, as well. We do a lot of work with our performance colleagues around social care. So we have live data around the numbers of looked after children who are um, who have an EHCP and who are sent support. Again, the levels of child in need. Again, the levels of child protection, number of early help open cases, those who are uh, open to youth offending system, um, and also our independent travel training and independent living team um, data from our adult social care is all supported into this data report. The question again, I come back to on a pause. This is all quite backwards looking. But it does enable us to look forward and go, so what? This question is some of the challenges I had was send being seen as a separate thing, and that's a send issue. We have this issue in Bethel, we name our statutory assessment team the send team, and therefore everyone assumes that they do with everything to do with send. And we have this issue where our social care colleagues weren't really seeing that it was relevant to them back in 2018, 2019. And actually, by using the data to show that 40% of all all of our cases in children's social care have sent it's absolutely relevant for every social worker to be up to date aware of the process and support that should be available they should be utilizing the local offer they should be doing that as part of initial um, initial assessments that are undertaken but also we should be challenging ourselves and nationally we should be challenging ourselves to ask the question why so many children on child protection plan disproportionately have the education public care board? and looking at why that is and looking at that data and bringing that to our social care qa board around asking ourselves the question of in Bedford Borough at various different times, it fluctuates, but just over four and a half percent of our school population have an EHCP, but that jumps to about 12 to 16 percent of children on a child protection plan have an EHCP. And that trends with national data um, and data set when you start to look at it. So starting to help us to ask those questions. Health data is always a challenge to pull out um, of especially if you're an I into working with an integrated care board that works with multiple local authorities because sometimes contracts aren't set up that way but looking at data around access times uh wait times 0 to 19 health data so health visiting data what's happening at your ages and stages questionnaire that's used at two and a quarter two and a half three and a quarter check depending on your um, time cams data personal health budgets annual health checks and right at the heart of it is our parent carers outcomes report as well so what parent care is telling us the quality of data so those are all the data sets that we use in our performance for, but how do we use it? So our SEND Improvement Board um, happens every six weeks in Bedford, um, and we then look at every other SEND Improvement Board will have a dedicated agenda item around our performance report. It's available should people want it at any point part of the agenda, but it's not just put on there so that it's not talked about you know, at, at various different times. One of the things that we found was there was so much data that it was easy for people to just present a very high level skim over the top. And we weren't really having the opportunity to get into it and start to ask some of those questions that I, I just went through in the last slide. Um, so we set up a um, send QA board, so quality assurance board, and it's a, a bit of a beast of a meeting, but it is effectively looking at um, an opportunity for us to really interrogate the data and go through it and start to ask ourselves some questions, to get direct feedback from children and young people who are to help and spoke, to get engagement with our participation leads and our community health service in CAMS, parent care reform feedback, um, and then looking at our quality assurance. So all of that is the first section of our meeting. And then we look at our health, health colleagues and social care colleagues to start to ask the question, around what does this mean for practice and what does this mean for you so that gives us an opportunity to have a much more robust interrogation of the data and our data dashboard as well as looking at all the other sets around qualitative data being brought in and then that is also what's fed back into our send improvement board so it's not just presenting the data but also presenting what has been discussed at qa board and what are the themes and emerging issues that are coming through what that does is it needs to have collective ownership and challenge. Um, it's a systems data set. This is not one organization's 
data that needs to be used. And I've put on there a case study, and, and I think one of the prime examples of whether data is being used and the system is working as effectively as it should be happens in annual health checks data. So most local areas, I imagine, or I hope, will be reporting on um, the numbers of, of learned disabilities and uh, annual health checks that are taking place in their GP practices, and in particular 40 to 25 when we're talking about percent. We did, and we do, regularly report on our annual health check data, and in that data set it showed that across the whole year, um, of those who were eligible, just over 42 percent, this is I think it was 2019, 42 percent had taken up the offer of having an annual health check. And this data was set, was shared. Um, and when we started to know that the system was working effectively, was when my head of my SEND team, so statutory assessment team um, for EHCP said, we can help. We'll make sure that we are putting this into our guidance for um, annual reviews and making sure that we're checking to see whether or not there's been a discussion that's taking place about whether they are on the register and whether they're taking up an annual health check. Colleagues from adult social care stepped in and said, we'll make sure that we're discussing this. Children with disabilities made sure they were discussing it at their um, our or their CIN reviews or CP core groups if, if, if child's on child protection plan. It was a collective ownership of this data isn't good enough, but it wasn't a what are you doing about this help? It was a we're looking at this data, we've looked at our performance, we're looking backwards, but now we're looking forwards around what are we collectively doing? It was flagged as an issue on our QA board, it was brought to our send improvement board, and we got around as a system to say, actually, if we're working well, this needs to improve. And it was almost a line in the sand marker of we then tracked it. Now, if you, anyone who's, who's done anything on annual health checks, normally it's about quarter four, it really jumps up, but we were able to track it to see we are we above where we were in Q1 and Q2 and Q3 and Q4 compared to last year. And that jumped from 42% to 78%. Um, as a result of collective ownership. This is where using a data dashboard rather than a so what of just having a lovely shiny data dashboard, it's actually what do we do with the data, which is one of the things that's really important in any system if we're going to actually use it um, collectively. The qualitative elements um, of it is you'll have heard, hopefully you'll have heard the phrase um, around co-production and, and true co-production is if you want to know how well a pair of shoes fits, you ask the person wearing them. You don't ask the person who paid for them or the person who made the shoes, you ask the person who's wearing them. And again, that's so true when it comes to data sets and data dashboards is quite often we know what it, we, we want to measure. We want to measure whether the system is working well or effectively. And then we try and pigeonhole data sets that don't quite work into any outcomes and we forget the fact that actually one of the simplest ways of of knowing whether the system working is asking people around their experiences their outcomes and trying to get that quality of data as well so we have our parent carers outcome survey so we work cl closely with our parent care reforms in the sixth year now of sending out an outcome survey gets on average between 500 to 600 responses every single year um, and it's the same questions or gets added more questions, but you can then start to track progress being made around specific areas of need. So we knew that um, parents weren't feeling heard was one of our questions. We've lots of questions around those points. We could then track after we'd refreshed and implemented and co-produce our new co-production charter, rolled out training around co-production. We could then track to see whether or not that was having any, any impact. It's really hard to find data measures other than qualitative ways to be able to pick that up. And again, CAMS and mental health data is a really big, difficult one. One of the outcomes that people said they wanted was, we want to know whether children are happy. It was a really interesting one that parent carers for said, and then you're trying to find a data set around that. And someone said, well, why don't we just see how many children are in CAMS and what are the access times if they get good? But is that truly a reflection of whether a child is happy? No, it's a, it's a measure you might be able to see access data improving but sometimes we really struggle and grapple with this idea of we know what the outcomes we want to do and trying to force quantitative data sets into it and just sometimes it doesn't fit and that's okay just ask the questions and make don't be afraid of qualitative data um our shout out to send conference is something that we do annual annually with our sort of pupil voice conference but 
dedicated specifically for, for children and young people with, with SEND and that enables us to get key messages and ask key questions and have workshops and different areas. But we also have a hub and spoke model. What we don't have in Bedford is we don't have a dedicated SEND forum, um, like a youth parliament or, or not. Um, one of the things is when we went to look at setting up, we found that actually there was, that was there was many children who would really struggle with the idea of working with, with adults they didn't know, coming to a new place, going online. It was, it was a challenge for us to look at where we were um, moving towards and we then created what's almost a, a reference group and then we do what we through our send QA group. We then decide what the themes and issues that are coming out emerging needs from the data from QA. We create resource packs, we send them out to all of our schools and to all of our centers, our special schools, our charities, our respite providers, and they work with groups and we get 150 odd responses from children and young people each time on those themes. So that's our hub and our spoke model. Um, and again, I've talked about our same QA board. So as hopefully alluded to with um, with what I've talked about with the quality of data, the quite often qualitative feedback or parent care feedback in particular is the canary in the coal mine. It can often tell you what is happening or what is going, that forward look of where your performance data or the lag might come through. So it needs to be key. We don't talk about a quantitative and a qualitative data as separate. It's all part of the same piece of, of, of utilising our data to think about how well we are performing, but also what we need to do to improve and continue to improve moving forward. So our forward facing data, we have our SEND Joint Strategic Needs Analysis, um, which we write a SEND chapter. We refresh that every every two years, um, utilising a lot of trend data um, as well. Qualitative, I put a question mark there because actually qualitative is often feedback, but it can be really helpful in shaping and trying to avoid data really falling off the face of a cliff. So often, again, parents or carers or children, young people or SENCOs or people in the system saying we're really struggling now, what's happened with this service or this service system feels like it's really at capacity or these issues are happening. And we can really start to then look at addressing some of that need forward facing to avoid the data falling off and then us deciding we have to build it back up. We had an issue of speech and language therapy where parents and carers really told us something was going on, something's happening in the, in the system, it's not quite working as well as it should be. And the data really then started showing that the numbers of you know our, our referrals to treatments in 18 weeks really fell off um, the face of a cliff. The numbers of speech and language therapists and vacancies then started to increase. It was really becoming a, a challenge, whereas if we listened to quality of data earlier, we might have had a chance of trying to address some of those challenges at some point. Talk about the QA and data analysis is again looking at the quality of data, quality of plans that we've we've done, looking at various dip sampling into meetings. We go into our annual reviews, we go into our we we do reviews of our panel making decisions. Um panels, yeah, panel making decisions that we then use that to then look at how we can improve continuous learning. We do not get this right. In fact, you know, there's many areas we're, we're not getting this right, so we need to address that, take the learning rather than just QA being a tick box exercise of what's the quality of your plans. It's got to be much more than that. We need to look at our housing population growth. If many areas talk about this, they talk about the census data, they don't really quite put two and two together. We weren't around the fact that we're building close to you know, 1,000 to 1,500 houses every single year. We know that a certain portion of those children and young people are going to have SEND. We weren't having conversations with developers about actually contributing to what we needed for services or schools or um, facilities moving forward. We need to get better at that. Sufficiency analysis, again, do we have enough um, capacity in our system of what we need to do? Thinking about our um, alternative education provision was something that we are now looking at linked to our solutions data. Um, do we have enough? Do we have sufficient um, analysis? And that all um, sufficient capacity. Well, a big case study for us is, is in further education of utilising the data and we realised that we had a bulge year coming through. Um, currently, well, it was in year nine at the time of children, um, in particular in our special schools, with behaviours that challenged and actually we realised from an effort further education sufficiency um, analysis that we didn't have sufficient capacity for when those children came through and we were going to have to send them out of borough to further education unless we commission something um, differently. So then we're able to go out to the market, do a provider market engagement event and bring in um, a high quality further education provider 
food from another area to set up and we were able to work with them. Again, it was looking at the data, interrogating the data, using it to think forward rather than just looking backwards, which enabled us to avoid a potentially big issue of having a significant numbers of children having to go out of borough to access um, appropriate provision, which is something that we, we were really passionate to avoid. Another thing I'm going to touch on very briefly is um, we we initially before COVID had real real challenges with with trying to get NHS numbers. Thankfully, that's got a little bit easier now. But um, we we do utilise our um, by getting access to NHS numbers for our send cohort, and that's really useful to um, then run reports to look at for our send cohort. Is there a dis distinct difference between access times? So we know what our general population access times are for CAMS, for speech and language therapy, OT, etc. And then we can fact check and run the same report by matching our NHS numbers to the NHS services can then utilise that data to then say, well, actually waiting times for a child group send are either lower or higher or longer, or you know, we can look at what services they're accessing. It's really useful. Um, to be able to 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 sense check the data that we that we had, but I put on the second bullet point around. This was a phrase that actually a, um, a a CQC inspector used with me, which I challenged was around. Um, they want to look at our send cams and whether or not you know what was the could be specifically focusing on our send cams um, around that particular point of send specific services was something that was really being utilised. And what we said is actually we look at data for general population and then we can run NHS numbers to then double check because what was really interesting is when we did that we found that there was more children with SEND who were in our core CAMS services than our neurodevelopmental CAMS services because actually there, there is similar to the social care conversation I had earlier of SEND is everybody's business and actually you need to be able to identify what services they are accessing. In particular what is also really um, useful in those in those conversations is also being able to then utilize those NHS numbers to identify in our community health services where those children are accessing services high levels in our competes and, and other areas. So you can compare that to overall performance data and and we got through uh, GDPR and we there's lots of evidence we can share that around. Um, we got a write up in the CDC data bulletin I think before around how we we managed to do that. So you need to utilize all data sources. So again, performance, qualitative, QA, JSNA, and outcomes. And that all goes into the pot, which then enables us to also think forward, make sure our strategy, our self-evaluation, and our action plan are all linked to the data sources and pulling in those data. So again, the, the conversation is not just about, you can have the best data dashboard in the world. You can have all those data sources and you can do that, but you need to have also some really key conditions for success. One of the things that I talk about in any area partnership is you need to let your shield down. If the data is 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 not good for a specific service area. You need to share that so that you can co-produce co with your partners in the local area to help you to improve it. Sometimes people were coming into meetings really defensive around it. Yes, the data looks bad, but and it was really you know they weren't we weren't open to start to have a real conversation around this is what we need. This is how I really help you know, really benefit if we could work together on addressing this if it's possible. Um, it's not an us and the them, but a we. So thinking back to the annual health check data, how can we help to improve that data data set? You need to know each other's context. Often, you know, I see lots of people when are going to other areas and, and we have some of this challenge ourselves in Bedford of, of people talk about long long wait times in the NHS, what are they doing about it? Well, actually, it's a system wide response we might need to think about. You know, we do need to think about when we're talking about our team around the school approaches, think about multidisciplinary teams, think about our roles as advisory teachers and local authority support to actually try and get around um, and improve some of the sort of waiting well terminology that is being used. What is our role in that as a local authority, not just saying, well, that's your data, what are you doing about it? Um, PCF and child and young people's voice at, at the very heart of every single thing. So it's not just sort of shared and uh, as a, every now and again, we look at the report, thank you for that, and then we move on. It's also about making sure that there's a really clear line of sight into the PCF to tell us exactly 
what they're hearing, what their thematic themes are, what the issues are and what we can do. And the Send QA board is a really useful um, tool to give us that space and that time so it doesn't feel rushed. The irony of me rushing to the end of this presentation, but it just shouldn't feel rushed when talking about data. Data is really rich, it doesn't tell you everything, but I always say it helps to show you what stones to look under to start to ask questions around what can be done to improve. So that's what we've done in Bedford. I was asked to sort of present around um, yes, we have a data dashboard, but more around the conditions and how we utilize it to start to ask some of those questions to help to improve the system, which I think when you use data to look forward and start to address some of the, the issues, that's really when you can start to do some things to, to address and how we've achieved things like that increase in the ACPs, but not a dramatic drop off in our timeliness or by addressing our workforce issues or, or other ends pause because there's any questions there but i'm conscious ben we don't have much time amazing chris that was yeah i mean i personally found that really fascinating and also getting some really nice comments in the chat we do have only two minutes i'm wondering if you can quit fire some of these um do you use outcome measures as part of your data or any kind of impact analysis yes so we uh we we co-produce an outcomes um uh, an outcomes measure an outcomes report um, and that cuts through also into our parent carers um, outcome survey. So it's linked between the, the key areas. So our parents and carers and children and young people came up with some key outcome statements that they wanted. And then we have some measures. We found it really hard to build some of the quantitative data sets against those outcomes. And that's some things areas really struggle with. We've got some, but that's why then the outcome survey is a really useful tool because what better than just to ask people, are these, you know, these, these, these are outcomes, what we're trying to work towards. Are they working or not? And that then leads to our priority areas and our strategy that hopefully you'll be able to see if you go on a local. Yeah, yeah. Are you able? Do you have? Is that a shareable thing? The the um, outcome. Yeah, absolutely. We can share. We can share our documents. They, they should. He says I should know this. They all are on our local offer, I think. But we can also share them and share links to them then as well, right. so they can be set, circulate. Um, I think. Another quick follow one is whether you'll be able to share the terms of reference for the QA send board. Yes, absolutely. Great. Um, I guess, how have you found partners um, kind of understanding of, uh, well, moving towards your understanding of the use of data um, and the kind of using data to plan? Has that been a, a seamless process? Um, so I think certainly initially with with um the ccg as it was at the time so going sort of quite way back before integrated care boards there was a real move toward uh, this view of it had to be send specific data again that seemed to be quite a, a common common thread we don't have the send specific data once we started thinking about and start to work through what that means and actually good acts you know early access to speech and language therapy early access to mental health services could actually prevent a child becoming, you know, having said support or requiring any ACP or not. So actually, why would we just look at those who got to that point? That really sort of made the penny drop with some of our, our colleagues in the NHS around how important it was to share the data. Um, and we're trying to do something in the moment around early years. One of my bugbears, get on my get on my soapbox here, sorry, Ben, but is around we we have loads of health visiting data, we have two year old review data, we have GLD data, we don't connect the dots. And we don't talk about the fact that actually should we be able to predict what our GLD data is from our IASQ, from our health visitor check data is, should we be able to predict whether or not we need to create more specialist nursery places or early years? We're not. So that's one. That's my next real big focus is around utilising that and, and we're bringing our health visiting colleagues alongside us to be thinking about utilising their data in the context of a, of a SEND system. Mm. Amazing. Um, I'm conscious of giving you a bit of a break and everyone a bit of a break before 12 20 there there are some very nice comments in the chat Chris, if you'd like to scroll through and people um really trying to find out your terms of find your terms of reference and um and other documents so we'll we'll um definitely follow up with that um but i think for now uh hopefully everyone can join me in saying thank you to chris and a reminder that the next session is at 12 20 so we've got about 10 minutes um and it's in a separate uh, link. So join then jo join another meeting there. Getting a lot of applause. All right, amazing. Thank you, everyone. Um, Thank you. See you in about 10 minutes. See you later.
we will we will have the recording and we will see the CDC team.